What's up guys, this is Melodic Punk, and today I'm here to talk about my first week impressions of the brand new Valve Steam Deck. Now, as you saw in my unboxing video, this is the package that it comes in. Like, it comes in a box, obviously, and with it, it comes with a free complimentary case. And as you open it up, there's the Steam Deck right here. You just pull on the tab, and there's the tablet itself. So... I got the 256 gigabyte SSD model of the Steam Deck. This is around $530 US. And uh, as you see, of course, this is not the reflective screen, the anti-glare screen coating, but that's okay. Because overall, just to like throw it off the bat, this is a fantastic device. I'm a big fan of the Steam Deck so far. I think it's fantastic. I love the fact that I can bring a lot of my games in my Steam library over to a handheld and just be able to lounge around, whether it's on the giant beanbag in my bedroom or downstairs on the couch, or even bring it with me on the go if I'm out in public. But it does have a lot of stuff that it needs uh, to be worked on. Now, as you see right here, it's kind of like very similar to it i wouldn't even say it's more similar to the switch i would say it's more similar to the wii u gamepad in terms of like its size and the feel like whenever i hold on to this it feels more like i'm holding on to the wii u gamepad because of these back uh grips right here and i was originally thinking that this device was going to be a lot more uncomfortable to handle especially when playing games but turns out it actually feels really comfortable in my hands i think the a the symmetrical sticks right here will help out a whole lot when it comes to this because sometimes whenever i'm playing switch yeah i'm more in the uh realm to where i kind of like the pro controller slash the xbox stick layout where the uh sticks aren't symmetrical but when it comes to things like this device i kind of prefer the symmetrical stick layout like the uh, dualshock 4 as i just shown because i think it's a lot more comfortable when it comes to a handheld and because whenever I'm playing the Switch, when you have the right analog stick right here and then you have the left up here, it kind of forces you to kind of tilt the system a little bit to get proper hand comfort. But with the Steam Deck, it just feels great. It feels natural. I don't have to tilt the screen or move my hands in any sort of way. So real quick, I don't have I'm not I don't have this like hard turned off or anything like that. But when you boot up, it'll give you a menu and it'll have you go through a setup. You select your language, select your time zone. You do have to be connected to the internet whenever you do set up the Steam Deck, so keep that in mind. Be on a Wi-Fi connection, be somewhere where you can set up the unit and then obviously eventually download your games and then you're good to go. But whenever you start up, it shows you your recent games that have been played across your Steam library. Shows you what's new down here, like a little new section. You probably can't see it right now because of how I'm moving the camera. You'll see your friends list. You'll see your recommended tab to play whatever's next in your library. And then, of course, they have a little Steam button right here. It's where you hit it. And at that point, it pulls up a little menu. You can go home. You can go to the library, go to your store, friends, media, your downloads. And then if you go down to power, you hit the power button. You can either choose to go to sleep mode, shut down the unit, restart the unit, or switch to a desktop environment, which is pretty much like a Linux desktop machine as you would normally use. And the cool thing about this is not only can you use this as a portable gaming device, but it's pretty much a full-blown Linux-based PC at that point. So you can go to your desktop. Uh, the Linux build that they're using is based on Arch, and the desktop environment is KDE Plasma. Linux guys, please let me know in the chat if I got that correctly. But what's really cool about this is because of this is basically like a built-in Steam controller, you have the trackpads, which are really good for naturally moving around the mouse around the desktop. And then you can click the trackpad or click the right analogs, uh, the right trigger right here to like click on your menu stuff. And it's very like intuitive. It's not like the most practical thing in the world, but it's very intuitive to like use a full blown desktop at the palm of your hand. And that's something that's been done before, but it feels really good on a device like this. And of course, obviously everything is connect powered by USB-C. So if you wanted to connect your charger to charge the system, which comes, it does, the system does come with the charger. You can do that. If you want to add in a uh, one terabyte SSD to just plug in and right there, you can do that. Uh, obviously, a lot of USB-C dongles are used for, uh, 
you know, HDMI connection and like on my Mac mini right here, you can use that and pretty much uh, have a USB-C dock ready to where you could plug into a monitor and use this thing like a proper desktop PC. And to me, that's really cool because it offers you kind of like that small bit of experience, a uh, small bit of taste, if you will, in terms of like a full desktop PC while also having the versatility of taking this on the go. And that's kind of like Nintendo Switch, but for PC. But where I kind of love the use out of Steam Deck is let's say I'm playing a game. Let me pull up my library real quick. I've been playing a lot of Hades on Steam lately. So obviously I tried Steam on Xbox Game Pass. I eventually get the Steam version knowing that I was gonna eventually play it on Steam Deck. And luckily it's a verified game, more about that later. So yeah, if I wanna go play Hades, I can go over to my couch downstairs, just play you know, my Steam Deck while chilling with family in the room or like watching TV, or let's say I wanted to go outside the house and I wanted to, for some reason, take my Steam Deck with me. I can play Hades, you know, enjoy it, you know, do multiple runs if I have to, and then I can go back over up here to the studio room at my Windows PC right here on the floor, log into Steam, play Hades on that machine, and it'll automatically carry all my cloud saves over from that session on Steam Deck. And obviously this works well if you have like a gaming laptop or any sort of like laptop computer that has Steam installed on it, is that all your save data from whatever game you are playing travels with you, kind of like how Xbox Play Anywhere does it. And to me, that's awesome. Cause like I said, I have quite a few games on here. Like for example, Monster Hunter Rise, which obviously came out on Nintendo Switch first. But the great thing about this, which makes Steam Deck awesome, is not only do I get the versatility option of playing this game portably, like how you normally would on Nintendo Switch, but I can take this, play Monster Hunter, grind for a little bit, do a couple of hunts, and then I can go over to my desktop, play Monster Hunter Rise on my current desktop PC, and play it at a much higher frame rate, much higher resolution, all that stuff. So you get the best of both worlds. You get the power of your main PC, depending on whatever you use, but you also get the aspect of being able to bring most of your library with you. And the reason why I say most is because there are some games that are purely verified, they're purely verified to work on Steam Deck, meaning you're gonna have no issues at all. But there are also a lot of games that either haven't been tested yet, may have some sort of issues like small text or having to bring up an on-screen keyboard, which the on-screen keyboard's easy. You just hit the Steam button plus X and it'll bring up the keyboard at any time. But also there's a lot of games that are not verified yet or they just straight up don't work on Steam Deck. And this is the one drawback about this device that's probably gonna have a lot of people question it. So there are some games that have not been verified but I have no issue playing. One of the most popular examples and most of you probably seen it on Twitter, Splitgate. Whenever I first uh, installed everything on my Steam, de Steam Deck, I first played Splitgate because I'm a big fan of that game. I actually really like Splitgate. I haven't played much of it in a while and I wanted to see if it actually worked on Steam Deck because when this thing first got revealed, I know the Splitgate guys, they were posting about getting this up and running on Steam Deck and on Linux. So I decided to test this game out and it's really cool because the Steam Deck has built in gyro control which you can change at any time. You can adjust these back buttons right here to do different commands. You can change around controls at any time. So being able to play that game with full gyro control was amazing. And I posted about it on Twitter saying that Steam Deck got to work. Uh, no, Split Gig got to work on Steam Deck. And the official Instagram, uh, the official Twitter page of Steam Deck actually messaged me on Twitter asking how the performance was and they were talking about how they were going to do more to enhance it and it was really cool because they were like I think you're the first guy to actually post our game running on Steam Deck and they ended up retweeting me so shout out to the team at 1047 games and Splitgate for doing that like I'm very humbled by that I'm a big fan of that game so yeah, Splitgate was one of those games that was not verified, but now is officially verified. I'm not gonna say it's because of me, but yeah, Steam uh, Splitgate is officially verified to work on Steam Deck. Now, there are some other games that I've tested out on here. It'll do two, I actually played around with It'll do two for a tiny bit, and the game seemed to be running fine. It's, of course, it's an indie game. Monster Hunter Rise, I had no issues running at all. I didn't play any multiplayer on this. I normally, run multiplayer with friends and uh, Monster Hunter Rise, but I was playing solo and I was doing absolutely okay. 
Uh, the one big like disappointment with the Steam Deck though is uh, games like Halo: The Master Chief Collection and Halo Infinite. They are not supported on Steam Deck. However, you can play them. You can play Halo: Master Chief Collection as long as you play the version that does not allow achievements and then disables the online to where you can like mod it or whatever. So you can play Halo Master Chief Collection, you're just not able to get any achievements or play online multiplayer. And that's because anything, any game that uses a uh, easy anti-cheat is not uh, gonna be able to work on Linux because I think they're, how, how it is is like there's no Linux kernel um, made for easy anti-cheat. So that's why a lot of the games that use that hook don't even um, run on a Steam Deck. But that's a very technical, like, software level thing that I don't know if can be fixed or not. So, Halo Master Chief Collection, it runs on Steam Deck, but it will not play online. It will not unlock achievements. Now, luckily, before I started making this video, there was an update made to get Windows drivers up and running that are made specifically for Steam Deck. So, I did, of course, a couple things, like... With Windows at first, like I got Cakewalk and Easy Drummer and my guitar rig to run on Steam Deck just so for the novelty of it. But then a couple days later, they ended up throwing in the official drivers uh, of Steam Deck for Windows. So I reinstalled Windows, I tried it out, and I got the Windows version of Master Chief Collection on Steam running on this thing. And the multiplayer was working fine. Uh, I think. The only issue I was having was uh, Wi-Fi related stuff because I had a bunch of stuff downloading. But yeah, Windows, If once Valve officially offers the software to be able to dual boot uh, operating systems, this is where Steam Deck is really going to shine because you can have a partition available for Windows so you can run all the Xbox Game Pass stuff. You can run the games that you want to play online but couldn't do because of steam os limitations and then of course epic game store is going to be a lot easier to access because of that so there is a lot of potential there when it comes to steam deck but right now it requires a lot of workarounds to get something going and for me i really don't want to be i don't want to keep windows installed on this thing i'd rather wait until the dual booting software comes in because i did play some games on windows on steam deck but I eventually went back to SteamOS just because the interface for the handheld is really good. And honestly, Proton, which is the uh, basically kind of like the software that takes DirectX games and has them read as Vulkan on Linux, it works really well to the point where it's like, well, dude, I'll just wait for the dual boot, dual boot option at first. And plus, this is more for like being able to play more of these indie games and games I have in the backlog. So... For me, it's not that big of a deal. I know this part of the video is kind of long-winded, but I am going to say Windows will work on this. It will play games on this. H games like Halo Master Chief Collection, you will be able to play multiplayer as long as you have Windows installed on this device and have the game installed on Windows. Other than that, I would say wait until dual booting becomes an option and just stick to SteamOS Linux for right now. Now, the cool thing about the SteamOS is you can hit this little button right here and it allows you to control the brightness, control the audio levels. But if you go down here, you can turn down like the Steam Haptics, the game rumble. And then if you continue going down, this is the one thing I like about the Steam Deck that you cannot do on the Switch as far as I know in this video. And that is you can turn on a night mode, which I don't know about you guys, but whenever, after like 10 o'clock or whatever, I have all my electronic devices instantly go into a nighttime mode which you know basically eliminates the blue light filter and allows you to continue looking at a screen without hurting your eyes and everything like that and the fact that the steam deck has this and the switch doesn't have it, it baffles me <laughs> in my opinion so this right here i 100 percent approve of a night mode i think that's awesome and then down here they have like battery options so right now i'm running at 96 percent and right now i'm getting like five and a half hours left but you have a performance overlay right here which Starting at level one, any game that you go and play, it'll show like your basic frame rate. But then as you uh, move the uh, overlay up a little bit more, it'll show you kind of like more of the performance information, like the CPU temperature, you know, all that stuff that you would want. That That's more like the technical digital foundry type of people uh, would like to look at. So if you go to advanced view, you have a frame rate limit. So if you wanted to preserve battery life, 
you can limit the frame rate down to 30 frames per second. Although they weirdly enough, they implemented an update to where you can limit a game down to 15 frames per second. I don't know why you would want to do that, but I've never felt the need to do that because I've always been playing Steam Deck either on the basic battery itself or always plugged in. So I've never had an issue with battery life so far. And then there's a TDP limit that you can have. There's a manual GPU clock that you can have. And then the scaling filter is really cool because it offers FSR, which I think is an AMD technology. So I think how it works is like when you play a certain game, like the screen is like 800, 1200 by 800 P something like that. It's a very crisp looking display. Like every game I've been playing on this, like actually looks really damn good and really crispy for a screen of this size. Um, but basically like FSR, I think is like a dynamic resolution scale. I haven't really used it that much. I haven't felt the need to use it because again, I'm not really running a whole lot of AAA games on this thing yet. And yeah, there's just a lot. Of, and then there's like a basic like help and support thing on here. So the games I have played on here, I have played a little bit of hat in time, which is like a 3d, you know, Mario 64 style platformer indie game. And I was getting okay performance on it. It was going to like 40 to 60 from what I felt. Obviously, like I would have to tweak around more with graphic settings on this. Um, Monster Hunter Rise, I was getting a solid 60 frames per second while playing that game on the average uh, settings. Hades runs like a dream on here. Death's Door runs like a dream on here. Uh, and I'm trying to think what else. Splitgate, I had everything on the lowest settings. I was getting 60 FPS. And I did try games like God of War 2018 out. And I was floating around like 45 to 50 frames at the highest as far as I remember. So like that was a game I definitely had to turn down graphic settings for or lock the frame rate on. But, you know, with God of War in that scenario, I would just play at my desktop. Um, but yeah, a lot of AAA stuff I just have not fully tried out yet. Mainly just because I think where a lot of people are kind of looking at the Steam Deck a little bit weird is... A lot of people want a more powerful like Nintendo Switch. They want a more powerful handheld that's basically going to be able to handle more games. This is essentially the best way to look at it, a portable PS4. And that's amazing, but you have to go in with the expectations of you're not going to get every single game running at 60 FPS on this device. Now, for games that I've played like Halo Master Chief Collection, when I was running this on Windows, I was getting perfect performance. No dips at all. I was having a blast. Like, I, I can't wait till I get dual booting on here so I can continue to play Halo Master Chief Collection on this device. But games like God of War 2018, which, you know, it's not a bad you know, optimized game for PC, but it, it does require a little bit more demanding hardware to get it running at the performance better than PS4. Um, that game can run on here just fine, but again, you're going to have to take a lot of uh, compromises with that as well. So for me, it's like this device does what I want it to do for me personally, and that is to take all my Steam backlog and allow me to play it on a portable device. So games like a hat and, uh, Spirit Fairer, for example, I have put a lot of time in this game last year. The only reason I haven't beat it yet is because I don't want to sit at a desktop to play the game. Yes, I can take my desktop, plug it into a TV, or play it on a laptop or whatever, but I kind of regret, regret not getting that game on the Switch initially, especially because of how laid back and relaxed that game is. With Steam Deck, I can take my current uh, play session of Spirit Spiritfarer, continue my save data on here on this device, and for some reason, if I want to move that session over to an actual desktop PC, I can do that. So for me that's what is making the steam deck worth it so far taking the library i already own be being able to bring all my save data and all my cloud data with me and then go back and forth between my main pc and uh this device right here so it is kind of a long-winded uh first impressions i have on this thing but i really do enjoy it i think it's a fantastic device i think the battery life is fine amazingly flawless for indie games some AAA games run well, others don't run that great. Um, the lack of multiplayer support for certain games kind of sucks. Um, obviously, with Linux, you're going to be able to find ways to play Battle.net games and you know EA games and all that stuff. But I really wanted to try to get Epic Games Store running up on this thing because uh, on Windows, Tony Hawk Pro Skaters 1 and 2 Remake ran perfectly fine at 60 FPS, but... 
mapping the Steam controller stuff uh, with Steam software was kind of difficult on my end. So again, a lot of tweaks would have to be made in order to get this thing fully up and running. But so far, I enjoy it. It feels comfortable to play. I'm not getting rid of this. I'm keeping this as a, a portable gaming device. And honestly, as somebody who has not touched my desktop PC in quite a bit, I'm really excited to keep using this thing because... I'd rather use this than a gaming laptop when it comes to portable gaming, just because this is more practical. I can actually sit down, relax, and play, you know, a video game like this. Whereas a laptop, even though it's more practical for like, you know, doing productive work and all that stuff, it's, you know, it's still like not as comfortable as just sitting down with a handheld. So to anybody out there who is getting a Steam Deck, keep your pre-order by the time you all get it, there's going to be more updates for this thing because Valve has been very consistent with putting out updates for the Steam Deck. Keep your pre-order because I think you're really going to enjoy this device as long as you can go in expecting a few compromises and being able to wait on a few things. Other than that, it's a fantastic device. Um, if you're really looking to like get a portable PC for like productive stuff like office work or like music and video editing on the go then maybe look at a laptop but if you're just wanting a secondary device to play all your backlog to tinker around with stuff and to play around with linux out of the box this is a great device to do that with and i highly recommend it if i had to give it a number i'd probably give it an 8 out of 10 it's i'm really enjoying the steam deck and yeah this video has gone long oh, the video has gone on long enough so i'm gonna go ahead and cut the video off right now thank you guys so much for checking out the unboxing video of the steam deck and checking out all the previous videos as well tunic comes out tomorrow by the time i have this video up i will probably already be playing it maybe i'll do a video on that i know that game is steam deck verified so i might do a separate video on the steam deck performance of that game and yeah guys this is melodic punk signing out and i'll see you all later take care